service over to the hands of our pastor. Give her a hearty amen as she comes, please. God is good. He continues to reach out and minister to his people. It's a blessing to be here tonight, to lift him up, to worship him in spirit and in truth. He didn't have to bless me, but he did. He didn't have to bless you, but he did. We're so grateful tonight for the blessings of God, for all that he has done, for the richness of his spirit. There's nothing in the world like it. Yes. I am grateful. I'm going to, we're coming up almost on a part two of the message this morning. And I hope I get a chance to put all of it in there because it's a lot to put in. So if I don't, I promise you I'll come back and get you the next time. Yes. Father, we're grateful tonight for your blessings. You loved us more than we could ever, ever imagine. Thank you for being my best friend. Thank you for being the Savior and the Lord of my life. I pray that you might be glorified in all that's said and done. I pray, God, that you give your people an ear to hear and a heart to receive your word, that they might apply to their own lives, that they might see changes taking place. I pray, God, for the anointing upon thy servant, for without you I can do nothing. With you I can do anything. And we'll give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Listen, I'm coming to you from Ezekiel, the 13th chapter. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel. 
that prophesy and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear, the, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Ye have not gone up into the, into the gaps, neither make up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they will confirm the word. Have ye not seen a vain vision? Have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, The Lord saith, It albeit I have not spoken. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, Therefore, behold, I am against you, saith the Lord, and mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and, and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord God, because even because they have seduced my people, saying, Peace. And there was no peace. One built up a wall, lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar saying unto them which daubed it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall, there shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstones, and shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. Lo, when the veil, when, when the wall is fallen, shall it not be said unto you, where is the daubing wherewith you daubed it? Therefore thus saith the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury, and then shall be an overflowing shower in mine anger and great hailstones in my fury in consuming it. Let me preach to you a little while tonight when he said, these people are telling one lie after another one. I am so alarmed at what I see and what I hear. I am troubled. I'm troubled by the fact how many people are going to be lost because the stories they're telling are not real. There's just some things they're putting out there. And I get so, you know what, people, you got to understand this. Those that's going to listen, or who's going to listen to this message over, over social media, understand this. Just because somebody tell you that God told them something don't mean that he told them. We tend to believe if he's in the pulpit and say God told me that he must have, not necessarily. And more and more, am I looking at liars from the pulpit keep talking about what God said to tell you and the phony tongues. Y'all listened to one phony tongue this afternoon. And it was saying, I wrote it down. Yeah, I got it here somewhere. I'll come back to it if I don't get it now. I will be back. But I thought, come on. And you know what they say? Well, God must be with them. You hear him speak in tongues, you better know what's of God and what's not. Because every tongue you hear is not of God. The devil has an imitation for everything. For everything. See? I am looking at this situation and looking at how they are masking the message. When you mask something, uh, it means so they put you in a place that you usually uh, uh, put positive structures can make them appear to be something less, uh, less malicious than they are. So what they do, they put this mask over and they tell you all this stuff that God said. That's why it's so important in this hour to read your Bible. He said, they say I said, but he said, I didn't say it. They said I, I gave them a vision, but I didn't give a vision. They had all this imagination out of their own heart. I didn't give it to them. You know what? You got to understand, preachers' lives must measure up to what they say God said. If they're not consecrated, if they're not dedicated to God, if they're not living 100% for him, you can't believe what they say. I cannot believe a preacher who doesn't spend time praying. I can't believe a preacher who's fasting, he says, but he getting nothing from God because his life don't measure up. And fasting is a bad word in the, in the church world. People don't fast. Preachers don't fast. That's why you see some of them belly look like they're going to have a baby. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. 
We need to know the people that are preaching to us. What do I know about your life? The people in this church have seen me for the last 38 years. You cannot in any way bring a reproach against my name. You'd have to tell a lie about it. So we want you to believe this is God. You better know it. The spirit of discernment that I got right after I got saved. I went on a seven-day fast. And it was the first time I ever went seven days. I thought I was going to die. And I remember when I got to the seventh day, I was sitting on the couch talking to the Lord. But when I looked up, I saw this precipice over here, running up there. And when I looked up there, Jesus was on there. He was walking across there. And in his hand was a gift. And I remember reaching out to get it. He said, not till the fast is done. Some things you're not going to get without fasting and praying. You just think God's walking around passing out his gifts like this here. You want, you, you want. No. There's a price to be paid. Right after that, I begin to see things clear, very clear. And I am alarmed today of how many people that plain can't see. And, and that's how they're getting over because they have eyes to see, but they see not. They have ears to hear, but they don't hear. And so it's important. I say every Christian ought to have some level of discernment. Every Christian. Because I'm telling you in this hour, there's so many false prophets. Every time you look up, there's some prophet on the TV talking about uh, what God revealed to him. And, and come on, brother, what else did he say? He ain't said nothing. He didn't say nothing the first time you opened your mouth. Think about it. The, you know what? I, I, I thought of this when the Lord brought this to me. Uh, the doctrine that's being taught to now is taught now is economics that analyzes cartel theory. So they talk about they talk about more about becoming an entrepreneur, your own business. All these people ain't getting no business. Then they turn around and say, well, I don't know how everybody the Lord told me that he didn't. He didn't tell you that. You know what I, I'm, I'm reminded of the preachers? They remind me of drug lords. But they are, they're the ones who's, who's pushing, the, pushing the lies. See, the drug lord is a high-ranking preacher who controls a sizable network of people involved in the false doctrine. So there's a lot of preachers out there. They all follow, they all follow the same thing. They all tell the same lie. They, they say, all, all of them say the same thing. You, if you heard one, you heard them all. So it reminds me of these drug lords, they're in the, in the business to make money. That's what they're there for, to make money. So I, you can't put much confidence in theory because it's a system of ideas intended to explain something to you and wash your little feeble mind with it to justify their course of action. The explanation are based on assumptions. From the assumption follows a number of possible hypotheses. They assume all this stuff, but nothing's sure. A thing that is accepted as true or as certain to happen without, without any proof. They tell you that, you waiting for the proof? God said he's going to give you a Cadillac. Are you still driving a Volkswagen? You ain't getting no Cadillac. You know what, God, you know what about God? He, God is not into the natural carnal side of life. If God is speaking from heaven, he's speaking to the soul. He's speaking to the spirit of man. But everybody wants to be rich. That's why the mega churches, I am convinced. Why they're mega? They got mega lies. People flock to that and say, hey, I believe you. I believe you. I want to believe you. Because that, may, that gives me the okay to continue to sin and do what I'm doing. So the scriptures talks about over here where he said, he told them, he told them to prophesy to us smooth things. Prophesy to us things.
things that make us feel good. One time somebody told me, a man that had done landscaping at the house said, he said, he said Sister Rose, I went, over to, I went over to New Life Church and he said, he said, that's a feel good church. The church is not to make you feel good, but to cause you to think. Amen. Cause you to think. Listen, when I look at it, everybody feels good. I'm listening to the message, and they're saying, what well, God's getting ready to do. You're getting ready to birth something in your spirit. There's always some baby getting ready to be born. The truth is, it's not true. There's no birthing taking place in a sinful vessel. It's not happening. we got to understand God works through righteousness and holiness. If we ain't righteous and we ain't holy, you ain't birthing nothing that came from heaven. You might be birthing something he gave you. You better be sure that some of these preachers you follow, that you're not picking up the same lying spirit they got. Now go write this before them in a table and note it in a book that I may be, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. This is a rebellious people, lying children. Children that will not hear the law of God. We don't want to hear what he got to say. Which say to the seers, see not. Don't see nothing. I'd like you don't see nothing. Then he says, and prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Prophesy to me lies. Don't tell me the truth. You know what? Because man hates the truth, the devil makes sure that you get the lie. He makes sure you get it. It said, get you out of the way and turn aside of, out of the path. Cause the, hope, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. We don't want God. I heard Joel Osteen say, we don't have cross, cross in the church or anything like that. People don't want crosses in the church. Why not? That's what church is supposed to be about. It's supposed to be about Jesus coming and giving his life. Why don't we want a cross? You got some great big metallic looking ball turning around in a circle. That don't represent God. Everything we got in this house should represent him. Everything. He said, you despise the word and trust in oppression and perverseness and, st and stay thereon. Therefore, th this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. He's saying, this thing you count on, it's going to fall. It's not going to last. We have more so-called weak Christians today than we ever had in our entire life. Did I tell you how I tried? I really meant to do it right? I heard Jimmy Swagger say one Sunday I was listening to his program, and, and they were talking about... Uh, sending his stuff and, and praying, and he said, well, I did all that, and I still fail. I thought you shouldn't tell them people that, because that's not true. If you do what the word says, you don't fail. You fail if you set your own plan. As you know, many, many years ago, he fell with a prostitute, and, and uh, you can still read it on the internet after all these years. This man was used of God at one point. In fact, Jimmy Swagger was probably the only preacher on TV that I watched every Sunday morning because the man preached the gospel. That's right. But I thought to myself, he said, somebody said, Brother Swagger, I'm praying for you. He said, I don't need your prayer. You'll never hear me say that. Pray for me. I'm praying for me, but you pray for me too. Yes. And all those things that I did, I prayed. I thought, no, you didn't. You may have been in a position of prayer, but praying is another story. Yes. So I prayed. He didn't mention fast, because most of them don't fast. So when I look at that, I'm thinking, God, help us to realize I am so glad that nobody can possibly persuade me to believe anything else except this Bible. Paul said if they come preaching any other doctrine, don't believe them. Don't believe them. So I need to hear what God is saying. What are you saying, God? I'm so glad I got saved when I got saved and 
I'm so glad I was taught uh, and laid a good foundation in my life that lasted 54 years. These folks can't stay saving a day, a few minutes, they're falling apart. And they all say, well, you can't help it. You know, Lord knows, he, he knows we're weak. No, no, he said, let the weak say I'm strong. Amen. I'm supposed to be strong. So, as I look at that, I think God opened the people's eyes. Elijah told the lad that was with him, he couldn't see nothing. He said, ah, master, look at there. There's more be against us than we are the, we against them. You know, when you're mature, you just stay cool. He said, Lord, open his eyes. Let, the four, let him see. The man sitting here, he don't even see. There's horses uh, with fire surrounding us. But when you can't see, that's tragic. You wouldn't have a blind man lead you around somewhere. Nobody in this church will get in the car outside this church and say, well, he's going to take me to King Super. Blind? I think not. And you know what you're going to say? I'm not getting in the car with him. He don't know he can't see. Well, you know what? We need to take the same approach when it comes to God. They can't see. They can't see. Um, let me, I've done a little study on this about the drug dealer. Boy, you know why they do drugs? Because that's fast money. It's fast money. One of the most richest drug dealers in the country is named Pablo Escobar. He is the richest drug dealer ever. So you know about him, Pookie? Yeah. <laughs> He was the seventh richest man in the world. His personal fortune was $25 billion from pushing drugs. That's what the preachers do. The drugs is the, is, is the lie that they're pushing to you that's going to destroy your life. It's not going to help you. You're not going to get better. You're not going to be empowered. You're not going to be an overcomer. That's not going to happen. So when I looked at that, I thought, hey, we got a drug dealer like that. He's called Kenneth Copeland. Yeah. He pushes lies, lies, and more lies. I'm trying to understand. You make me understand. Uh, why do I have to have a fleet of planes? And then we wonder why the church, why the world looks at us and say, what's wrong with you preachers? Why do you got to have so much? Why you got to have a fleet of jets? Why can't you have a plane? You don't need a plane. You can charter a plane. You don't need it. These preachers are highly organized. Organized churches, organized religion. They are businessmen. Church is not about God. It's not about how I can get my life right. It's all about money, things, houses, things. They have high organized operations that run like a serious business. Ministry is treated like a business. That's what they do. It's all about that. You can't get anything from them that's going to make you uh, be convicted of where you are. You can't get the truth from them because they don't, they don't function in truth. And I want this to go all over social media. I went done some study one day and I thought about how they set you up. They have all these t-shirts and cups and all this stuff that has nothing to do with the kingdom. Why you got a t-shirt that said Jesus loves you? Baby, the Bible tells me that already. Yes, I don't need that. And all this, all these, all these so-called words and putting scripture on the shirts, they selling shirts, they selling cups, they selling records, they selling tapes, they selling books, they sell, sell, sell. It's all about business. And when I studied it, it was amazing how much how much in comparison they're like people in the world who has a business. They set it up, they they market the people that's coming to their site. They do all this stuff. The preachers are doing this. I studied all of them. 
So they market that and they tell you this is something you got to have. This book here will help you change your life. You don't need nothing but this book right here. It'll change your life. It'll change your life. Everybody's writing books so they can make money. But you know what? At the end of the day, if you read this Bible, everything you ever need to know and want to know is right here. I don't have to read your personal opinion. It's a business. Family members take over when they die. Business. Well, God didn't necessarily call them. Just start training them early so when we die off the scene, you continue on. Kenneth Copeland is worth almost $1 billion. And I'm thinking, there's a lot of things I want to do to help people, but I don't need a billion dollars to do it. I can do it with less. That is, if you don't put it all on yourself. So oftentimes they put it all on themselves so, uh, so you have nothing to give nobody. Some of the stingiest people in the world is mega preachers. I will never forget the Sunday I watched Joyce Meyer. She came on and said that the Lord told her to give this woman some earrings. God ain't concerned about your ear. One thing about your ear is to hear. Whether rings is in it or not, got nothing to do with it. But God told her to give somebody some earrings. And you know what she did? She said, I went to, the, to my uh, thing, and I looked and looked and looked, and I said, God, you have to help me with this because I love all my earrings. I don't want to give any of them away. But they'll teach you to give your last dollar, your last penny. Give us your money. If you send the money, God's going to do this. You send, and you sit back waiting for a long time. Where's God? They said he was going to do this. They said, uh, I was going to have this and I was going to have that. The Bible said he blessed some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Everybody don't get 100. Everybody don't get 60. But he's going to reward you for what you give if you plant the seed in good ground. Planting seed in these ministries is not good ground. Because it's about them. Now, they're going to show you the part where they're overseas and, and they got the outreach for this and outreach for that. But at the end of the day, it's about business. It's all about business. Think about it. Think about it. So they probably never heard them being called uh, drug lords ever. But they are. That's exactly what they are. The mega church organizations work together to protect their interests. They all help each other. They all say, well, you know, when we put our, our thing out there, and this is how much we got from it. We got this and we got that. When I went out on the site one day checking it out, it's so much stuff for sale. I'm thinking, what does this have to do with the gospel? His wife got her own T-shirt. He got his shirt. He got his book. She got her book. This is all about money. When you go to these conferences, and now they're kind of slowing down off of them because they ain't giving, getting as much money as they were, but it's all about how, much you, how many books up there, how, many, how much money can we make? It ain't about God. Anything that's not about God will do nothing for you spiritually. It will not endow you. It will leave you with nothing and spiritually destitute. Yes. The church is a group of independent preachers who collude with each other in order to improve their profits and dominate the religious market. That's what they do. So we all pull together. You tell me, how, tell me about your trick, I'll tell you about my trick. Well, I tried this on, and it works. So when you go out there, if you dial that number and dial 800, 800 number, they have people literally who is uh, uh, following these phone calls and see which, or, which things are they ordering the most of. And if you're ordering the most of those things, let's raise that. And if you're not ordering this, in what way can we improve that, that, that we can get money out of that? That's what the marketeers do. People that's in business, that's what they do. Constantly trying to make some money. And they never get enough. You know what the prophet Isaiah said? He said they are greedy dogs that never have enough, and that's the truth. 
seem like the more they get, the more they want. But the scripture says he that loves silver will never be satisfied with silver. He that loves gold will never be satisfied with gold because I always want more than that. I tell the Lord, bless me with more than enough that I might help other people. That's what I want to be blessed more than enough. It's a religious market. And they follow a pattern of encouraging you to take this truth, I'm telling you, except it's not truth. So for the drug dealer, do he supplies you with the stuff that you need. You know what he does? He, he, he encourages you to, to use drugs, and they're pretty much convinced you it's just a small thing. It's not going to be big. But, but what they don't tell you is that I'm trying to get you in so deep until you have to come to me and get more drugs. That's how they make money. That's how preachers make more money. When the Lord told me the other day, he said they're, they're searing, they are actually searing their conscience. He said, this is what they do. They tell you, quit worrying about all this stuff. Don't concern yourself with it. You're okay the way you are. And then you leave out of church feeling somewhat, well, I always felt it was like that. You know, because these people try to make serving God so difficult, and you can't do this and you can't do that. There's some can't do's here. You can't do everything you want to do. There's some can't do's. And so all they want to do is tell you what you can't do. Not true. We tell you what the word says you can do, but the word also says what you can't do. That's what it says. So what they do, they keep pushing you. So you come to church and you hear this, and you think, wow, I don't have to worry about it no more. You know, I went to the club last night. I got drunk. I don't have to worry about it no more. Everything's A-OK. -okay. They leave church feeling OK. Here's the problem. After you lie to them and they leave the church, what happens to them? First, it's like being on a temporary high. Feels so good. Boy, I don't have to worry about nothing no more. You know, I, I'm going to heaven anyhow. No, you're not. But they leave the church feeling good. Here's the problem. When the drug dealer is pushing drugs, he gives you just enough to give you this high. I feel, guys, it just feels so good. It's great. I feel like I don't have any problems. The things that used to bother me, they don't bother me no more. You know, this is just, wow. But shortly thereafter, the conscience starts bothering you again. The drug dealer, the preacher dealer, is going to give you enough. But he knows this. You're going to come back because that one thing I gave you today won't last for weeks. It won't last for months. Because you're going to begin to start feeling condemned again. You're going to start feeling guilty again. So where do, you, where do you go? You go back to the dealer. And when you go in, he lifts you up again and tells you how great this thing is. And you don't have to worry about this. And you don't have to worry about that. And quit blaming yourself. Quit feeling guilty. Put that behind you. So you get this temporary high again. And you leave the church and you go out there for the moment. But after a few days, why is it? He keeps, he keeps telling me that I shouldn't let nothing bother me. But why is it bothering me? The conscious starts to work again. So every time you go back to the dealer, you got to have more than you had before. Tell me a bigger lie. Tell prophesy to me a bunch of garbage. Tell me all this stuff. And when they do it, you feel like I can make it. But this time, you're hooked. You look over the audience, there's mega thousands and thousands of people not including those around the world who is listening to this message. But it's a deceptive message. It's not true. It's going to destroy you in the long run. So the wages of sin is death. Got to get away from it. Got to get away from it. So independent drug dealers makes an average of twenty to $30,000 a year. Being self-employed offers these, these men uh, a freedom unavailable to them at a normal job. They don't want to work. Sorry, bum, just sit around and bleed you to death. Yeah, come in here. Lord wants you to give me $20. Lord wants you to give me 100 If you do this, $25 and 27 cents, God says, get ready to move. It ain't true. It's not true. And how many people 
uh, looking at God, said, I don't believe in God no more because I went to church and they told me this was going to happen, that was going to happen, except it never happened. Don't blame God for the liar. God didn't speak to him. He said, I never spoke to these people. I never told them no such thing. So he says, these, they make twenty dollars to $30,000 a year. They don't like to work. So they don't get a normal job. They just get people that they can hook with lies. If you get enough people liking lies, you can have a mega church. Today, Colorado Springs Fellowship could turn into one of the biggest mega churches on the planet. Just get off this stuff right here. Don't talk about this, Sister Rose. Don't tell me I'm wrong. Don't tell me to get rid of the pride. Don't tell me that'll take you to hell. You're self-destruct. Don't tell me that. I want people to tell me I'm okay. See? They don't hold down a real job because it's better to tell you a bundle of lies and get paid for that. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to help you really. I look at them preachers sometimes and I think, wow, do you know you're going to die? Do you know all this stuff that you've accumulated is going to be left here? And one day it's all going to be burned up. Why are you selling your soul for? Why do you sell your soul for? It's temporary thing. Paul said, I don't look at the things that are seen. Why? Because they're temporal. But I work toward those things that you can't see because they're eternal. They're eternal. So they keep feeding you lies and you keep coming back because it makes you feel good. You know, everybody wants to feel good. That's why sex dominates our society. I just want a good feeling. But the, the problem with sex, the, the feeling is short-lived. I just think, how do, you, how do you give up God for sex? If you go out tonight and have sex with somebody, it's a matter of a few, poof, 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 it's over. <laughs> it's over. By the time you say, whoa, it's done. You're going to hell for a moment? For a moment? That's not going to last? And you already know that everybody that's in this room, at some point in time, you have sex with somebody. And I can tell you the climax is so brief. You just think, I got to have it. I got to have it. Oh, my God. This, oh, my God. Yes. Uh, uh. How sick is that? And just like you started, it's over. And you're sitting there thinking, and, and here's the feeling, that you done backslid and, and you realize that that's not doing the trick. I thought I had to have that. I thought I could not serve God without that. But until God gives you a husband or a wife that makes it legal, don't go do it. Oh, no. I get so tired of hearing that. Uh, I, I looked at a preacher online the other day. I haven't read it because it's about 23 pages. He, he was so corrupt and so immoral. He was telling his story on the Internet, and I pulled it up. I meant to re read it already, but I didn't get a chance because there's so, so much of it. And he's boasting about it. And they let him come. You know what? If you support me knowing that I'm a liar and a crook, you're no better than me. You, you have enabled me to be a crook. Why? Because you give me your money. You, you make me feel good. And so here's some money. If you support a liar and a dealer, a lying dealer, that's why, that's why the churches become mega. Back in the day when we was coming up, there were no mega churches because them people preached the gospel. I mean, they said you won't either get right or go to hell. You couldn't come into a hole in this church. People were scared to go in a hole in this church. You know what they said? Boy, those people can see things. You don't go in there, boy, oh my God, they, can, they look right through you. Well, they can come to church all they want to now. Ain't nobody seeing through you. Just, and you sitting there with all kind of seeing here and, 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 and think that you're getting away with it and God tells on you. He tells on you. As many times these people in this church have seen God expose sin, they still think they're going to get away. That's amazing to me. 
And then when you tell them what, what's going on, then they look at you like, well, I, well I've been trying. God's not going to reward you for trying. He's going to reward you because you've done it. You did it. Listen. Some of the richest drug dealers could make a personal fortune of billions of dollars. Now, here's what they say. Well, they don't take money from the ministry. You, you started somewhere taking it. That's how you got some money to invest. So somewhere you took it from the church. It's amazing. Hypothesis is something more than a wild guess, but less than a well-established theory. So they tell you these stories. Well, the sister gave to the Lord, and, um, and the Lord said he was going to do this. And she, here's, here's, here's. She, he gave her, she gave $50. The Lord gave her 2000 back. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. They tell you these short stories with all this stuff. It's not true. You can get anybody to tell a lie. I told them the other day I was on the internet for something, and I thought, every time you think, well, this might be a pretty good product. They didn't do nothing but get their friends to say, I got it. I had it. It works. That's the best stuff I ever had. People say, well, they got about 10 people. They're all friends. So you get your friend to say it's a good product. Get enough of them out there. Hey, you got people saying, hey, that's good. And then you buy it and find out it ain't worth a nickel. It don't do the trick. It don't work. They test their hypotheses. They try to gather as much data as they can so that we can prove our, our hypothesis one way or another. So I need some data. I go over here and say, hey, look at here. So, so, so come here, honey. Look at this. This woman will tell you right now, tell them what God did for you. What did you do? I, uh, I, gave, I gave Bishop $1,000. And I looked in the mailbox, and I had a check for $2,000. You was getting that anyway. You knew that check was coming all along if you never gave it to the bishop. You know, come on, people, come on. Listen, if we follow their theory, which is a system of, of ideas intended to explain something to justify a course of action, uh, the explanations are based on assumptions and you can assume a whole bunch of stuff and it'll have no truth to it. Well, the way I looked at it, I thought this. Well, I thought that. Well, I assume that's what. Just because you assume it don't make it true. Don't make it true. Listen. True, true preacher that's called of God will trouble your conscience. They will cause you to feel convicted. They will cause you to say, I need to change. I need to get my life together. True preachers, that's what they're there for. So they tell you don't listen to him, so they have to, to plaster the wall and plaster it until it looks as neat and as substantial as it were built from polished stone, except it's not. But it has the appearance. God told Samuel when he went down to pick a king for him, he said, don't look at the outward appearance. He said, God sees something that you don't see. He sees further than that. So they cover your sins and whitewash it. And say, don't worry about it. I heard, I heard Bishop Jakes when he was being interviewed by, by uh, Oprah Winfrey. He said, uh, I'm not perfect. I mess up every day. He's your leader? You need a leader that don't mess up. You need a leader that does it right. Why, if you're messing up every day, how can you teach me that God will give you the victory in any situation, but you mess up every day? And then he said, and all of y'all going to mess up every day. Well, I don't believe it. Why? Because I lived the life. I found out, no, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work that way. He said, I, I constantly mess up. Here's the thing I'm looking at. Bishop Jakes used to have the real thing years ago. We used to watch it. That man preached the gospel. He came from the old school. 
He was, he was, he had it going on. What happened? He got in love with money and things. The scripture says how many of them have coveted that and erred from the faith, left the faith for money, for fame. You got to tell me, you ain't going to tell me nowhere in the Bible that it tells me if you read my bio or whatever, uh, 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 that it says that uh, Rose Banks is pastor, movie producer, entrepreneur, nothing in the word says that. That's why you ought to look and say, well, who, how many of the apostles became uh, entrepreneurs? How many people, how many people in the word was movie producers? It's not happening. The minute I see that, that's an exit. When I see the exit, I can't follow you. You took a wrong turn. If they walk good today, follow them as they follow Christ. If they stop following him, don't follow. If they're doing something that the word says don't do, they whitewash it and make it not look bad. Look at this. It's okay. And people by the millions are buying into this system, this theory. To whitewash means to gloss over it. I don't tell you about that, but that's okay. It's okay, quick. Yes, Sister Rosa, y'all don't worry about that stuff. God loves you. Here's the new thing. All you need to know is that God loves you. You can do anything you want to do because he loves you. I love my kids, but they couldn't do anything they wanted to do. You had to answer to me if you've done things that you shouldn't have done. So no, I love my children, but I whooped their rear end when they got out of line. You think God ain't whooping some people? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Get out of line if you want to. Whom the Lord loveth, he chaseth. Meaning he chases you, he whips you, he corrects you. Quit telling me that, oh, that God is just love. He is a God of wrath as well. He's a God that will correct you. He's a God that will put you back in line through whatever means he has to use. So quit telling me. That's all you got to know is that he loves you. So when you sin, quit worrying about it. He loves you. Whatever you do, he loves you. Did you just remind yourself of that? He loves you. God, help us. So they gloss over it. They... They exonerate you. Well, tell me, brother, it's crap. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. I was at a meeting in Washington one time. It's the tent meeting. H.O. Uh, Robinson was there. He called, he called this lady up and began to prophesy over her. This woman was a rank sinner, wasn't serving God. Now, you should have heard the stuff he told. God's going to use you. How can he use you if you ain't saved? He don't work in unclean vessels. And I'm sitting in the audience thinking, are you kidding? You talking about her? That woman is out of, that woman is over the top with sin. And he was telling her all the things that God's going to do. And that's the message you hear. Turn your TV on. You hear the televangelist saying, God's getting ready to do this for you. God's getting ready to show himself. God is getting ready to manifest himself to you in a way like you never had before. The thing you've been wanting, God's, he's on the verge of getting it. And they say, woo. No. The, tr the truth is, he's not getting ready to give you nothing. You got to live right. You got to walk right. Um, Creflo Dollar says, it don't require you to do anything. It's already done. Y'all you, you, need to quit wearing yourself out trying to do something so that you accept, so God will accept you. Quit trying to do anything. You don't have to do nothing. That's a lie. Every one of us has came to God. We had to do something. Let the unrighteous man forsake his way. We had to quit doing sin. We couldn't just keep doing sin. You don't have to do nothing. Quit worrying about trying to do something to make it right. You got to do something. If a man come after me, let him deny himself. Let him take up his cross and follow me. I got to do some things. I got to walk right. I got to talk right. I got to commit my life to God 100%. It requires something of us. It's not just handed to you. Okay, here. No. What are you willing to do for it? He told the rich young ruler, he said, good master, what can I do to, to gain eternal life? 
said, well, well, you know the law, love your mother, your father, and people, and do honor this and do that, and went on. And he said, well, Lord, I've done all that. He feeling good. All those I've kept from my youth. He said, but you lack one thing. Sell out. Give up everything you got and say, God, it's all yours. Here I am. Do with me what you will. The rich young ruler went away sorrowful when he found out what was involved. He had to do something. I got a message coming on here shortly talking about the sellout of the gospel, sellout of ministry. I mean, they sold out for money. I want to be famous. Bishop Jakes used to get on, 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 on TV and say, I want to be Oprah. Oprah's a rich whore. That's what she is. Why, why is there something that Oprah got that you want to be like her? Yes. I want to be like Oprah. And he kept going until he got in Oprah's court. He said, yeah, I went to Oprah's mansion. <laughs> something to see. I'm going to get me one of those. Whatever cost it takes. If I have to lie to people, cheat, steal, I'm getting me one house like Oprah. And I used to think, Oprah should want to be like you. And did you tell Oprah yet? They're just friends. He's just sitting there talking and they interviewing. And she's telling Bishop Jakes, I love your messages and all this stuff. Have you told her that she's going to hell for living with Stepney for 30 years and didn't marry him? Marriage is honorable. The bed is undefiled. Homemongers and adulterers. God said, I'm going to judge you. Have you told her that? She wouldn't be your friend if you did. Don Lemon, he's, he's a homosexual. And he said, Bishop Jakes is one of my favorite preachers. I'm sure I wouldn't be. Because you can't be a homosexual and be saved. No, no. God made male and female. He didn't mean for male to hook with male and female to hook with the, that never. He burned up a whole city because of that. He destroyed a whole city for homosexuality. And our society is welcoming them and saying it's okay. I thought you never told Don Lemon that's not good. That's, that's, that's immoral. That's not what you should be doing. I'm never going to understand that. Can you picture, you can, I can't, couldn't even possibly picture myself in the bed with a woman. If something like that happened, you ought to get up and beat your own brains out. <laughs> what are you doing? How in the world could you possibly get some gratification from that? God burned up a whole city because of it. I addressed some people that came to this church, and still, some of them still come this homosexual, and I let them know God loves you. Sister Rose loves you. But I'm not going to condone your lifestyle because that's not scripture. It's not scripture. They got churches actually with homosexual pastors, musicians, all this is going on. And they call it church. It's a tragedy. Listen, if we started endorsing sin and bringing in all this stuff saying it's okay, God loves you, he does, but if you don't repent and get rid of that sin, you're going to go to hell. That's the bottom line. But they, all of them in the church like that. I mean, you can see them playing the musical instruments and they so feminine until it's like, wow. You don't have to wonder, is he? Oh, no. He is. She is. It's without doubt. Years ago when I was a girl, that was not accepted. No way if you did it, it was hid. It was kept and everybody came out the closet all at one time. And the Lord showed me this dream. I was in Oklahoma. This has been, oh my God, maybe 35 years ago. No, longer than that, because I've been here 38. So in Oklahoma, I had this dream. And in the dream, hell released all these spirits out of hell. You could hear them like horses going to a battle. And you know what they were? They were homosexual spirits literally filling the earth. That's way back many years ago. And in the dream it said to me, there will be more marriages and lives destroyed over these spirits that's plaguing the earth than any other relationship that's ever been. And it's, it's so true. Way back then, those things were everywhere. 
There's like buzzards everywhere. If you don't walk with God, you may say, well, honey, I would never do that. You, if you serve the devil, you're going to do some things. You're going to do some things that you said you'd never do. If you serve the devil, oh, yes, you will. Oh, Sister Rose, I don't care what anybody say, honey. Uh, I'm, I'm, better, I'm stronger than that. You ain't strong. You ain't strong. We are strong in him. In him. Yeah. Paul said, I can do all things through him that strengthens me. See? They are quick to tell you short stories, fables, stories about extraordinary persons or incidents. And I hear that all the time. Let me tell you about this. This sister over here. Come here, sister. Praise God. The Lord is saying, he needs you to give $50,026. And when you give that, everything's going to change for you. And they sitting there, hey, hey. Your bill's going to be paid off. You better keep your money and pay your own bill. Why am, I, why am I giving my money? If I'm going to get my bills paid off, why am I giving you my money? I need my money to pay my own bill. They took me off the air. I was on TV. I didn't want to be on TV. When they called me and asked me that I want to be on, I said, I'm really not interested. Well, Sister Rose, why don't you give it a chance? Now, how much money do you want to raise? I said, what? Well, if you're going to be on TV, everybody comes on, says, uh, they come on and saying how much money they need to raise. I said, we're not raising any money. If I come on TV, it ain't about raising money. It's about preaching the gospel. So I was calling their names out to crooked preachers over the air. So the, uh, the grandson of the man that owned the station said, uh, called me up, said, Sister Rose, this is so-and-so. He said, uh, I'm going to have to pull you off the air. I said, really? I said, well, you don't know I never wanted to be on there. Well, if you keep calling these preachers' names, I'm going to have to pull you off. I said, let me go ahead and make it easy for you. Go ahead and do that right now. Because if you think I'm going to stop calling their names, I'm not. Right, right. Or Roberts, uh, Richard Roberts come out here telling this lie about uh, God said debt is demonic. So you have debt. There's nothing demonic about debt. People make bills because they don't have enough money to pay cash. So he says demonic, but check this out. He says, but uh, I want you to go to your phone right now and give me your Visa, your MasterCard, and charge the money you sent it to us on that card. I thought, wait a minute, what is wrong with that picture? I said, now if debt is a demon, why are you taking the demon's money? So I brought it up on the air. I said, Richard Roberts, you need to quit lying to God's people. Whoa, I was in trouble. I said, if it's, a, if it's demonic, why are you asking me to, to charge it on my card and give it to you? He did not like that. They came back at me and were talking. You can talk in tongues all day long if you want to. I don't buy it anyway. So um, they said, uh, Oral Roberts said, before he died and what the hell he said, uh, he said, oh, you got to. Pull her off the air, they said. The, the news was in California. Get rid of her. She's going to do more damage than good. She's out here calling these people's names. She's saying what they shouldn't be doing. And she talked about Richard Roberts. You're a liar. But I can give you my money. I just asked the question. I said, well, how is, is, how, what's wrong with that picture? I said, get her off the air. The word was going around in California. We got a call. Said They said Sister Rose needs to be pulled off the air because the Things she's doing is just not acceptable. And I kept getting happy. I thought, I'm glad to get off. But you know what? Don't call no names. The scripture says, mark them who cause division. Mark them who's not living right. Don't let them play the hypocrite. Uncover them for who they are. That's what it's all about. False doctrines are set of ideas or beliefs that are taught or believed to be true. Believed to be true, not true. So, but biblical doctrine refers to teachings that align with the revealed word of God. It aligns with the word. That's how you know it's right. The word says do this, and you're living your life like that. See? False doctrine is any idea that adds to or takes away from, from uh, 
takes away from anything that anything that's right. It, it I mean, if it's a good doctor, false doctrine is going to take away. Okay, so it contradicts or nullifies the doctrine given in God's word. It nullifies that. Okay. To invalidate the word. Say, no, that don't, that's not what happened. No, that's not what God meant. Hear what they say. I don't think the Lord meant that. I don't think God needs you to interpret what he meant. He's very clear on what he meant. Says, he tells us exactly what's going on with us. What is it? You know what op op opioids? It covers, it covers mass pain and trauma. They're working on it now, trying to get that under control for this country because so many people are on drugs. And some of the drugs are, are given to them by doctors. But it's eating up their life. So when you hear a lie, it's like having a, a drug. And it's got you out here. I told you one night my kids gave me a, a relaxer. They said, um, Mama, take this relaxer so you can go right to sleep. So I said, OK. I don't take pills, so I said, OK. Honey, never again. I woke up, I said, For some reason, I thought I was on a ship. <laughs> I to bed like that. And I pick up the phone, and I call my daughter. I said, Nisi, she's upstairs. I said, Nisi, come down here. Why did you leave me on this ship? <laughs> and Nisi said, what's wrong with you? I said, you left me on this ship with all these people. One relaxer. It relaxed me and put me on a ship. <laughs> and every time I said, she came out there, she said, Mama, what's wrong? I said, you see all these people around here sleep. You left me on a ship with them. I said, where's my jeans at? <laughs> I don't even wear jeans. Where are my jeans? And Lisa said, what? My jeans. I know you <laughs> crazy. I said, "Oh no!" So when they said, "Mama, you want?" I, mm, I'm not going on another ship, and I'm not going to be asking for my jeans that I don't wear. It's amazing. So can you imagine people that's taking drugs, all these drugs? I got you on this unbelievable high, but it's a false high. And when you come down. They said when people get through taking those drugs, they said when they come down, it's worse than when they went, had, it, had it to go up. When they come down, it's like a crash. That's why they kill themselves. And then they get more and more. You can't even buy Claritin D without them ready. You have to sign for it. It's a sinus uh, thing. You have to sign for it because people take it and turn it into drugs and stuff, and they, and they do all this stuff with it. Listen to this. They had a man in the church I read online. He was a young preacher that was over the young people. He was bringing them, telling them how they could, didn't have to sin. They could get past all this and what have you. He blew his brains out. And what were you telling me? Apparently, I better not listen to you because am I, am I brains next? Yeah, he blew his brains out. He called himself a, a youth leader. These people got titles, but they don't have good. They have titles but don't have any good. Think about it. The preachers are going to great extremes to break the law of God. They disregard what the word of God says 100%. That's what I'm going to do. I re and I wonder sometimes when they're when they telling people you can sin and it's okay, what are you going to do with the scripture where he said, he that is born of God does not commit sin. That means we take on the nature of God. We're born again, so we can't sin. Why? Because the seed of God rests in us. So, so, so that's how you know you're really saved. The seed of God, his, div his divinity, his who he is, his righteousness, his holiness is in you. He said, if you're born of God, you cannot sin. He didn't say you might not. He says you cannot. You can't even do it. I 
thought about that. I thought, what are you telling me? Uh, it's done. Then he says, if you are in Christ, you're a new creature, you're empowered. So every old things, everything old in your life is passed away now. Everything is new. How am I still doing it? How, why am I not still cursing people out? Why am I not beating up people? Because that's not in me. The seed of God is in me. Therefore, I cannot, not maybe, I cannot sin. He that is born of God doth not sin. Shall we continue in sin? No, God forbid it. Well, then how are you telling me he, it's okay for your sins today, the ones yesterday, I mean tomorrow, the ones for your future? Uh, God's got it taken care of. But when do I stop? You, ain't, you, you can't sin. People that sin, they're not committed to God. See, I don't believe that woman standing up there talking about she don't sin. I don't give a hoot whether you believe it or not. I speak for myself. I'm not, I don't have oop moments. Oop, I'm sorry. Excuse my French. The French would be offended at the language you call and excuse their French. Their language to them is the most, they take, I mean, they take pride in their language. And you using curse words, somebody excuse my French. No child of God that's serving God is going to use profanity. How many people don't even know it? Because from the pulpits of America, you're not telling them that. You cannot curse somebody out and say, well, praise God, praise God, praise God. No. Think about it, but they're telling you that's okay. It's just something small. Don't worry about it. All drugs that you get for pain mask the pain. That's what they're there for. They mask the pain. The pain is still there. It just masks it. So it feels like, wow, that pill really made me feel good. I don't have any pain anymore. It's only for the moment. That's why you say you got to take it every four hours, take it every six hours. That's why. Because it's mass. I just feel so much better. God, that pain is gone. Yeah. But until you heal, you'll keep taking the pain pill. Trying to get through the pain. And that's the way it is when people lie to you and don't tell you the truth. So they mask the gospel to keep you from catching hold to the real thing that's going to empower you to become the best that you can be for God, no matter what. They continue to bring you drugs from the pulpits of America and dope you up and make you feel like everything is all right and it's not. If, if I, as a preacher, don't preach against it, I will answer to God for the fact I didn't tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. You need to feel bad about your sins. Without remorse, you will repeat it. Anytime you do wrong, you have to be remorseful that, God, I'm sorry I did that. And when you get saved, you're not going to spend your whole saved life talking about, I had to repent today. I had to be repent. I can't believe that preachers tell the people in the air, I do just what you do. I'm no better than you. Well, you better get away from them. If your pastor's not better than you and walk in a certain place with God, you better get away from them because they can't help you. If you, can't, if you can't do it, how are you going to tell me I can do it? You can't do it. See? Understand, the more you get drugged with, with a lie, the more desensitized you become. It's, 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 it's okay. Well, where did you get that? How did you reach that conclusion? The preacher said it this morning. Back in the Church of God in Christ, where I was born and raised in, said if the bishop says it's okay, it's okay. No, it's not. If the bishop says it's, it's right or wrong according to the word, that's, that's, that's law. But mm -mm. So they, had the, they, had, the, they had, the, had the women, the sisters and the brothers swimming together in the pool. Now, now you know that's going to be a problem. She steps in there with all her rear ends shaking out of a, 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 a swimsuit. He gets in with some Speedos on. And all the family jewel is there to see. Now, you mean to tell me lust ain't going to come from that? You don't put yourself in that position. 
Lust. Lust. So don't, don't, don't put yourself in a position that you cause men to lust or women to lust. Take his, do things just right. But they're telling you, sex, well, say Bishop said it's okay if we all get in the same swimming pool. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I said, don't listen to the bishop. Because he'll bring his nasty stuff out in there in some speedos. <laughs> Can't do it. Think about it. Where are you at? They say, God is not angry with you. It's not a problem. Here's T.D. Jakes' tongue. Shay said, up. <laughs> Shay said, up. I thought, brother, that ain't no tongue. Shay said, up. I just wrote it down, I thought. Sad. And and Dollar says, <laughs> It's not the Holy Ghost. The real tongue, there's no there's no mixing it up. You know it came from God, but when you are about No. I can do that, I ain't the Holy Ghost. And and, and then people looking at it like, wow. You hear that he's speaking in tongues. No, he's not. But that makes you believe it. This, I'm getting ready to close, this Steve Furtick. This man is worth $55 million. He's on the air. He wears jeans all tore up, cut holes all down his thighs and down his legs. And he's got a shirt on that's open all the way down here. And he happened to be a, have a lot of hair on his chest and it's all bushed out here. And you know what women are thinking? <laughs> like to lay up on that. You don't do that. He's called himself a preacher. Hair sitting out, and he's up there calling himself preaching a message to you, and he got Chris Brown who writes all their songs for them. Chris Brown. If you don't know who he is, he's a no good mom. He beat up more women, but he's writing songs for your church. Something's wrong with that. The word says, come out from among them and be separate. Leave the world alone. Don't mingle with them. Don't, don't get involved with them. Come out. Touch not that which is unclean. Don't lay your hands on it. God said, you'll be my people and I'll be your God. Think about it. You tonight are learning, if nothing else. You are learning what truth is. When Sister Rose is long gone, remember this. Remember this, so when you see it, you recognize it. That's bad business, I don't wanna go there, I don't wanna do that. Think about it. And his church is called the Elevation. Ain't nothing elevated there. I was so shocked that Chris Brown does all of our writing. So, tonight I'm getting ready to close. Anybody that takes your sin and just smooth over it like that, No. You know what? If you live right, you don't have to cover nobody's sin because if you do, you got something covered yourself and you're scared somebody going to tell it. But when you do it right, you don't have to worry about it. Take this tonight and say, you know what? I'm going to be careful. You turn that TV on, know your Bible. Somebody in the pulpit talk just because they're in the pulpit don't mean they're right. Stand to your feet. It's going to be on social media, they're coming to get me, but that's okay. <laughs> I gladly, gladly say it. When I, when I preached a message years ago about the pimp and the prostitute, oh. that the preachers were the pimps and the church was the prostitute. We got calls asking for that tape all over the entire country. Pimps and the prostitute, pimp and the prostitute. We had more requests for that message than any message we ever preached. People wanted it, because that's what it's saying. The, the preacher's the pimp, and he's using you. God bless you. I hope you take this and say, I'm going to do something with this. I'm going to pay attention to the truth. I'm going to get to know God for myself. See, I'm glad that man, he didn't make the sunshine. For he may not, he may not let it shine on me. Oh, 
see and I'm glad, I'm glad man didn't let the raindrops fall. Cause one of these days, he would forget, he forget to water the grain. Oh, and that's why I'm glad that that man, he didn't make me, oh Lord. Cause he was surely, one day he surely, he surely destroyed me. Oh, that's why I'm glad, yes I'm glad. Lord gave 